Quantum Big with Steve Bartilla. Brought to you by... One of the most frustrating and sickening parts, about the only bad part about hunting, is when you mess up and you wound a whitetail. Um, and I'm here to tell you, I can't speak for anyone else, but frankly, when people tell me that they've never ever wounded a whitetail, I generally think that one of two, th well, one of three things is occurring. A, you were born with a horseshoe lodge somewhere. Because man, I'll tell you what, a lot of things happen between when you release that air and when it impacts. Um, and at the same time, you got all sorts of nerves working for you. The person isn't telling me the truth, or the third option is, hmm, you haven't killed a lot of deer, have you? Now, uh, if a person does a lot of hunting, eventually Murphy's Law is going to apply and something is going to go wrong. But that doesn't mean there aren't things that we can't do to minimize it. And we owe it to that animal and, frankly, to our sport to do just that. First, we're really great at practicing for, you know, shooting paper targets and blocks of styrofoam. You know, that's awesome. We need to do that because the more we do this stuff, the more we ingrain muscle memory in. And that's good. And at the same time, we can see any problems with our form, hopefully, and our bow setup. That's all good and great. We need to get sighted in. All good. Okay. But, don't sit there and practice a whole bunch of 20 yards with two feet on the ground. That's not how you hunt. If you really want to zero in, zero in your, your human form and your bow setup, go ahead and shoot ridiculously long distances. Practice, that is. Um, Rather than practice at 20 yards, practice at 80 yards, practice at 100 yards. I know for people that haven't shot that, that long a distance, that sounds extremely overwhelming and difficult. I'll tell you what, with today's archery equipment, I mean, I can, I can go ahead and hit this at 100 yards almost every time with my Matthews. It, once you get in the mindset once you figure out where you need to hold, it's not that hard shooting long distances, but it does two things for you. It goes ahead and points, well, it does three things. It points out any issues you have in your own form. It points out any tuning issues that your setup may have, and sure makes those 20, 30 yard shots seem easy. So, once you get zeroed in, well, if you're practicing on the ground as much as possible, <laughs> I'll practice shooting 60 yards 10 times more at least than I'll sh go ahead and practice shooting 20 yards. Once you get zeroed in on those short distances, do the majority of your practicing from longer distances. Then, set up tree stands, set up ground blinds, practice like you hunt. Once you feel like, okay, I'm zeroed in now, now from there, there forward as much as possible, you practice like you hunt. Okay. By doing, by practicing from tree stands, you learn real fast. Your hips are where you got to do all of your bending. You can't just go ahead and go like this and kill a deer. Well, you could get lucky, but that's generally speaking how you wound it. So what I do every year to start with is first thing I do is I set up my stand, get up in there, slap a target out at <coughs> a known distance, pretend that target's parallel to my plane and then bend down at the waist and shoot. Once I get that down, I'll start doing this. And bend. And you keep practicing like that, that muscle memory is ingrained in your brain. So now that deer comes through, I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm doing this. Because I know how my body needs to contort from doing that practicing. Um, practice with your gear at least once or twice before you go out. You should never ever bring, and I'm including your camel, your outer layers. You should never ever be shooting at a white tail for the first time with whatever equipment you have on or are using. Lastly, practice in the conditions that you hunt in. How many of us are hunting at noon? Not that many. I mean, during the rut and stuff, sure. But generally speaking, we're hunting 
during the twilight hours. Practice during those twilight hours. If you're going to go ahead and hunt in a stiff wind, practice in stiff winds. That way you know what that wind is going to do to your arrow before you go out. You want, if you're going to hunt in precipitation, practice in precipitation. You know, the more you can make practice mimic real world hunting scenarios, thankfully, the lower the odds of actually wounding that whitetail is, and the higher it is of making a clean, effective kill that very first time. Hunting Big with Steve Bartilla. Brought to you by. If you want to practice in ways to take your game, your shooting game up a notch, first, practice from long distances once you get sighted in. By practicing long distances, it shows issues with your form, your bow setup, and at the same time, really builds confidence. When you're shooting 20 yards after you've shot 100, that seems really, really, really easy. And don't kid yourself, a lot of this, at least for me, is a mental game. When I believe that deer is dead before I pull that bow back, that deer's probably in trouble. If I'm questioning if I can pull this off, if I'm trying to figure out, geez, can I make that? Well, that deer is probably as safe as if it was in its mother's arms. Now, <clears throat> confidence makes a big deal. Then practice like you hunt. You practice like you hunt. You ingrain those body positions into your muscle memory. And you know what? You don't have to sit there and think at the moment of truth because I can't speak for any of you guys and girls, but I am not at my best when I've got a buck I want to, or a doe for that matter, coming through that I want. I'm an excited bundle of nerves, and God love it, I'm going to keep doing this as long as I am. Do those things, and you can go ahead and take your kill rate up a substantial notch if you're having problems with it.